Today we're going to learn about the BGS1, that's the battery grip for the Lumix S1 and S1R. going to start off with how this mounts on because it's a neat little trick that you may not have noticed unless you read the manual. Obviously, it's just going to screw onto the bottom, but there's a couple of neat little tricks in here. First, let's take a look at the bottom of the camera here. You'll notice that there is this little rubber door, rubber flap, and that is where this is going to connect to. We need to peel that off and it completely removes and, and there's the point of contact for the grip. And you're thinking, well, what am I going to do with this thing? I know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to lose it because that is exactly the kind of thing that you would do with a little part like that. And then you take this part, the actual grip itself, and you'll see that there is a cover on here to protect these precious little pins, the pins that are going to connect to that bottom part of the camera. And then you've got this little cover and you're thinking, well, that's just great. What am I going to do with this? I know exactly what I'm going to do with this. Same thing I did with this. I'm going to lose them. I have no idea where they go. No, you're not, because there is not only a storage place for the cap, there is also a storage place for the little rubber door. If we take a very close look at the door here, you'll notice there is a little illustration. That lines up with this little tab right there, and that tells you that these go together like so. And now look, your rubber cap is stored inside of the cap for the battery grip itself. So now you take this and it stores into here. There we go, snaps into place. It sits flush and you now have a nice safe storage location for the cap and the rubber door. The reason you don't want to lose that rubber door is because that rubber door provides weather sealing to the bottom of your S1 or S1R. You don't want to make your camera no longer weather sealed and if that's off, it's not. Of course, once you put the grip onto it, then it's weather sealed again. But if you're going to take it off, you don't want to lose that rubber door. At this point, it's pretty straightforward. Just mount this thing onto here. There is a screw mount on the back, a little locking screw. You just thread that thing into place, get that all nice and snug on there. And that's all there is to that. Now, let's talk about putting the batteries in. So you've got a battery door on the top here. Open that up. You've got your battery door on there. And there's a little hole in here, right here, that pops open so that a cable can go through. So if you wanted to, you could put a dummy battery in here, thread the cable through that hole so this thing could run basically forever and ever. And not too many people are probably gonna do that because you do have USB-C charging. You can actually power the camera from USB-C. So I don't know how many people are gonna use that, but if you're gonna use it, it's there. If you do use it, you do wanna make sure that you close this door when, you, uh, when you're done with it. Because again, weather sealing is really important. If this door is open, water could get in there. And I will also tell you that getting this rubber door back in, it's a little tricky. You kind of got to pull it from the back. It's like pulling a thread out of a sweater. You know, it's kind of pulled out. You got to reach in behind him. Now let's pop a battery in here. Interesting point, you can use two batteries in here, obviously, or you can use one. You could have a battery just in this grip or just in the external grip. Either way, it's up to you. Maybe you only have one battery and you're just using the grip because you like the vertical grip on there. You don't have to have a battery in both places. And cool point is you can have the battery in either one of them. So for most people, I think if you're using one battery, you're going to store it in here because that means, of course, that when the battery dies, you can easily get to it to pop it out and replace it. But if you are constantly taking the grip on and off and uh, just because you want to have the vertical grip and you're not so concerned about having to take this off to swap out the battery, then you could store it in the handle inside as well. Either way is up to you. Just a brief interruption to remind you to check out photojoseph.com where you'll find all of my YouTube videos organized by product, making it really easy to find exactly what you're looking for. You may also want to check out my live training where I do deep dives on various photo and video apps, often resulting in hours and hours of training for those products. Also, be sure to check out the workshops page to see if there's any upcoming events you may want to join me on. And finally, while you're there, subscribe to the newsletter so you don't miss a thing. All right, now back to our show. All right, let's plug in the USB charger because I want to show you something about that as well. We'll see on the top of the display here that it now says that it's charging and you can see the status of both batteries on there. You see the internal one is fully charged and the battery grip one is in the process of charging. And you can also control which battery is going to get used first. You go to the wrench settings and then this one that says in out, it's a little box with almost a kind of a Wi-Fi signal on there. And then you scroll down to battery use priority and you can set the priority to the battery grip or the body. Which one do you want it to use first? Most people are going to choose to have the battery grip as the default one. That way when the battery grip battery dies, you can pull it out and swap it out and it will automatically switch over to the internal one. 
even if you're shooting video, live shooting video, when the external battery, the one of the battery grip dies, it will carry over automatically to the internal one seamlessly, no dropping of video. You can pop that out and replace it with a fresh battery, which is a really nice feature to be able to do. But if for any reason you wanted to choose to use the body first, you can do that as well. While we're in here, I'll show you this. There's a little battery information option in here. When you pull that up, it tells you the status and the health of your batteries. And these are both brand new batteries, of course, so they're full green. While you've got two batteries in here, according to the stats, you can get about 660 photos on the S1R and about 720 on the S1. Now, I haven't tested that, and that actually seems a little on the low side, and I'm gonna guess that Panasonic's being pretty conservative on that, because these are pretty big batteries. Obviously, they're pretty big cameras as well, but I think you probably get a little bit more than that. But I have not tested it, so you take that with a grain of salt. That is what it is. Now let's take a look at the tripod socket on the bottom because this has a nice little extra feature on there as well. It has a pin that's an anti-rotation pin for your tripod plate. So if you have a plate like this one, this is a Manfrotto plate, and it's got this pin on there, then when you put these in, line those up on there and start to tighten that down. So now I haven't tightened it, it's just barely tight on there, but now you can see the plate will not rotate. So that's an anti-rotation pin, which is definitely a good thing to have on there. And then we get into the buttons on the, on the grip itself. This power button is not going to power the camera itself on and off. This is a power switch for the grip. So you still have the power switch on the top of the camera that you would use to turn the camera itself on and off. But by having a separate power switch for the grip, that means that you won't accidentally trigger the camera from the buttons here or bump any of the buttons here if you're not using them. Obviously, when you're holding it like this, they're out of your way, but it's easy enough to accidentally hit them. So if that's something you're running into, you have the ability to turn that off there. The rest of the buttons on here are essentially repeats of what you find on the camera itself. So you've got on here your front dial, of course the shutter, you have a white balance ISO button uh, over and under exposure, there's that power button again, and the rear command dial. So front command dial and rear command dial both recreated on there. If we flip it over to this side, you'll see you have your autofocus on button. You have over here the joystick for moving the focus point around, which is a full rotation as well as a push in joystick. And then you have a customizable function button on here as well. And that customizable function button by default is set up to be the Q menu, but like all the function buttons on your Lumix camera, you can reprogram that to do whatever you want. Go to the gear menu and operation one page, FN button set. Go to the record mode, you'll see now at the bottom of the display there, we are seeing a little battery grip on there and I could tap on that FN there and set that to whatever I want. Not a complex product, but, uh, but it has some nice little functions on it. I love the fact that you can store the cap and the cover inside of the grip itself, so you're never gonna lose that. I like that it has the locking pin for your tripod plate on the bottom. And of course that it recreates all the buttons you're gonna need so that when you are shooting in a vertical orientation, you've got access to all the right buttons. We're gonna jump into the live Q&A next. If you are watching live, stick around for that. If you're not watching live, then the Q&A will pop up right here.